Did you know that you can create endpoints with Next.js server actions just by adding a simple functions to your components? That's right, you don't anymore have to create API routes for each separate operation, but rather just create a function to your component and that's it. In this video, you will learn the basics of server actions, which include how to define them and create multiple endpoints per page by just defining simple functions. We will also take a look on how caching works and what revalidate path and revalidate tag means. Lastly, we will learn how to automatically fetch new data when it's available. And all this is done using only server components. To learn all this, we will create a simple to-do list application where you can add to-dos and the application will list. Let's start by creating a fresh Next.js application. And then let's open it up in VS Code, like this. And this will be our to-do list application. But before we jump into this, let's do one more setup thing. And that is, let's go to the GitHub and you can open up this repository from GitHub. It's a simple JSON API that we can use as a backend for our to-do list application in this example. So to use this, you can click over here and click SSH and copy the git URL for this and let's go back to our terminal and clone the repository. So I'm gonna type in git clone and then paste in the URL and hit enter and once that's run let's go to that API directory so cd json API and let's install the dependencies over here so yarn install and once that's run we want to type in yarn build and then yarn start like this. So we can see that our API is now running in localhost 3001. So what this is, is just a basic Next.js application that exposes a to-do list API for us to use as our to-do list application backend. So if we go to the localhost 3001 in our browser, we can see that this is a mock data API. You can see information about different endpoints that this has. So for example, we can get all the to-dos by going to API slash to-do slash list, and it will return some JSON data for the to-dos. So this is something we will use in our application, but for now it's enough that it's running in the background in the 3001 port. So make sure it's running on the localhost and 3001 port. Okay, we will come back to that later. So let's open up VS Code. So this is our fresh Next.js application. So what I'm going to do next is add a to-do page that will be our to-do list application. So I'm going to open up the SRC and app folder and create a new folder inside of that called to-do. And inside of that, I will place a page file like this and then add some boilerplate code for our page like this. So what we have here is a form for inputting the new to-dos. So we just have an input named name, so the to-do name, and then we have a submit button. And below that, we have a list of the to-do items, and currently it's just hard-coded values over here. So let's save this and fire up our dev server and see what this looks like in the browser. So now our dev server is running, so I will switch to the browser and go to the localhost 3000 this time. So let's refresh the page. So we get the Next.js application front page, but what we did was add the to do to the slash to do route. So let's go there. And over here we can see our form. So we have the input, the submit button, and the list of to dos. So the first thing we want to do here is actually fetch these to dos from the API. So this API over here that we uh, set up earlier. So we want to get them from the slash API slash to do slash list. So what I'm going to actually do is copy this URL from here and switch back to my Next.js application. And what I'm going to do here is just a function that fetches the to dos. So let's do that. So let's call it get to dos. And inside of here, I'm going to use fetch to fetch our to dos like this. So we are fetching them from the API. 
and make sure this address is the same as your address is where you are running the API. So you can check it from the terminal where you started the JSON API. So right here we can see it's the localhost 3001. So now that we have the get to do function ready, the only thing left to do is actually call this function and then display the to do's down here. So let's call the function first like this. So now we have access to the to do's and we can display them in the list down here. So let's add the code for that like this. So we are displaying the to do name and putting the ID as a key for the list item. And how I know that these are the properties that we want to access? Well, we can check the browser and see what the API returns. So it returns ID, name, and is done. Okay, so now that this is finished, let's save this and check the browser. Okay, so looks like the fetch is working because these to-do items are from the API. So next, what we want to do is actually add new to-dos. So whenever we type in something for the input field, so whenever we click the add to-do button, we want to take that to-do and send it to the API. So let's do that next. And for this, we will use server actions. So server actions are basically functions that you can define in your code and they will create an endpoint automatically and you can use them in your server components. So let's see how to do that. So I'm gonna start by defining my server action. I will define it over here. So it's just a normal async function. So let's do that like this. And to make this a server action, we are going to type in use server up here like this. So this lets Next.js know that this is a server action and should only be run on the server. And what we want to do here is post to do to API whenever this is fired. So how can we invoke this? Well, we can do it by passing in a parameter for this form element called action, and that equals the add to do like this. So whenever this form is submitted, this action will be called. And this will actually get a form data object as a parameter. So let's add that like this. So next, let's add the code for sending the new to do to the API. So if we check out the browser again and check the API documentation, we can see that we can post new to do's to the API by making a post request to the slash API slash to do slash add and adding the name as a parameter for that request. So let's do that. So first I'm going to convert this form data object to a normal object, which will have key values of the form values down here. So let me add that code for it. So we are just defining new object and then looping through the keys and values of that form data and storing them in that data. So now this data object will basically have a name property that is the value of this name input. All right, now that we have our data, what we want to do next is submit that data to the API. So let me add the code for that and let's go through it together like this. So we are using the fetch again and we are posting it to the API to that API slash to do slash add path and using the post method. And as a body, we are stringifying the data. So our name data will be passed in here. So now if we save this and switch back to the browser, we can see that we are getting an error saying that the server actions is still experimental. So at the time of recording this, they are still experimental. So we need to actually add a feature flag in our Next.js config. So let's do that. So I'm going to open up my next config.js and add the following code over here like this. So we are passing server actions through for the experimental property. So let's save this. And for this, we need to reboot our server. So let's do that. So now that the server is back on, let's switch back to the browser and refresh the page. Okay, so let's try to add a new to-do and click add to-do. All right, it made a request. We can see it from the dev tools and the payload had the name for it and it returned 200. So everything is okay. So it looks like the to-do was added, but it didn't appear here yet. So let's try to refresh the page. It still doesn't appear here. So let's check the actual API from our browser. 
and see if that to do was added. So I'm gonna open up the localhost 3001 and go to the API to do list and look over here and looks like our to do was added. So it's this one over here. But for some reason, it's not displaying it in here, even though we are refreshing the page. And this is because Next.js is by default caching the fetch requests. So if we look at the fetch request of our to-dos down here, the get to-dos, we have a couple of options. The first option is to pass in a prop for our fetch request called cache and setting it no store like this. So what this will do is it will tell Next.js to not cache this request and every time this is called, it will hit the API and not the cache. So let's try it. So I'm gonna save this and switch back to the browser. And now if we refresh the page, we can see that our to-do appears over here. So that's one way. But let's see what happens if we add another to-do over here. So I'm gonna get, create to-do two like this and click add to-do. Looks like it adds the to-do. We have get 200. It is also added over here if we check the API it's added to the API, but still it doesn't display it in our to-do items list until we refresh the page like this, then it appears. So now we are getting the fresh to-dos every time we are refreshing the page, but this isn't what we want. What we want is to have the to-do appear over here whenever we add it to the API. And to do that, we can use something called revalidate path or revalidate tag. So let's see how to use those. So I'm gonna switch to the VS code and I'm actually gonna remove this parameter that we just added because we want to use the cache sometimes. And next for the add to do server action, after we have posted the to do to the API, what we want to do is call revalidate path like this. And as a parameter, we want to pass the path we want to revalidate and that is at this case slash to do. So our to do page. And then we still need to import that function. So let's do that like this. So we are importing the revalidate path from next cache. So now whenever the to do is added to the API over here, we are calling the revalidate path, which basically tells Next.js that there is new to do's that should be fetched. So let's save this and try it out. So I'm gonna switch back to the browser and now it's actually just showing the first three projects because it's showing the first cached version of the fetch request. So now if we add a new to-do, it should call the revalidate path and all the to-dos should appear down there. So I'm gonna add to-do three, click add to-do and the to-dos appear here. What about if I add another one like this, you can see that it is added and automatically this list is updated. This is pretty cool because we can do all this with just a server component. So we are not using client components over here at all. So we are getting all this functionality with just server components. So the other way to revalidate that I mentioned was the revalidate tag. So let's see how that works too. So instead of calling the revalidate path, I'm gonna import a function called revalidate tag like this. And now over here, I'm gonna call that. And as a parameter, I'm gonna pass in a tag. And this is something that I'm defining. So for this example, I could say it's to do items like this, for example. And in order for this to work, we also need to tell this fetch that we are tagging this result with the to do items tag. So basically the result of this fetch request will be tagged with to do items in the next chess cache. So we can then just revalidate the tag to do items and Next.js will automatically refetch these items. So how to define that tag? Well, let's pass in an object as a parameter for that fetch and we want to give it a property next and that equals an object which has a property called tags and we can define multiple tags with an array and for this we just want to add to do items like this. Let's save it, switch back to the browser and let's try to add new to do over here. Let's say five, add to do and looks like it's working. That's great. So now we are always 
revalidating the tag to do items whenever we are adding a new to do. But a good practice for this is actually add revalidate property also. And this tells Next.js how long this cache should be valid. So after how many seconds we should revalidate this cache. And let's say we want to revalidate it in one hour, for example. So this is just a good practice to add it over here. So just in case there is some problem with revalidating, it will at least every hour revalidate that cache. But what's the difference between these two, the revalidate tag and revalidate path? Well, with the tag, you can tag certain requests for the cache and just revalidate some of them. But with this revalidate path, you will always revalidate the whole path. Since the server action code is run on the server, you are not just limited on using these REST API calls in them, but you can, for example, access a database directly in here. Virtual has the key value storage that is one of the easiest and fastest ways to add database to your Next.js application. So click the video on the screen to learn how to set up the virtual key value store inside your own Next.js application.